Stayallday.com Everybody, Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. <clears throat> Today is Sunday morning, January 12th, so I'm recording this video the same day that y'all gonna see it. This is a response to the QA. Got over 100 comments slash questions posted on the original QA video. So let me let me just explain quickly how this is gonna work. I'm gonna go through each question. I'm gonna answer the good questions. I ain't gonna answer every single thing on here. If questions get repeated or something I'll cover it in video. I'll mention that, but I'm not going to go through every single one in detail. I'm going to go pretty quickly through these since there's so many of them. I don't want this video to be too long-winded, but I will let each person know if I've covered this somewhere else where you can find it. Now, as far as this video that you're watching here, if you have questions that I haven't covered, leave them in the comments to this video, and then next week we'll do another Q&A. And I'm going to keep this going as long as I'm getting good quality questions. Now, the questions start to get whack, and it starts to get not worth it then i'm gonna stop it and i'll let you know that i'm stopping it as far as the questions that get posted to this video do not come in and start responding to the questions with your own responses or your own comments as i said in the first one i'm gonna have to get rid of you off this channel so that's that let's get right into it first question rob asks at what point would i call it quits if i'm making to the nba it would be whenever I, f I don't feel like playing no more really simple as that whenever i'm not having fun with it I'm going to stop playing ball if I don't feel like going to the gym every day. I don't feel like working out no more. I lose the passion to go out there and compete on the court. Or I feel like I can't physically do it anymore. I can't physically compete with the best players around wherever I'm at. Then I'll be done with basketball. I ain't going to be limping around in no 35 and over league or none of that shit. When I'm done, I'm done. Matthew asked, he doesn't have teammates on his back. Can I give them some tips on how to get their respect? I covered that in the video, Matthew. If your teammates ain't giving you respect, is probably because you're not that good. So you need to step your game up, step your performance up. And once you do that, you'll start getting your respect. So work on your game, basically, is the answer to the question. Afro Nomo asked me, is my favorite NBA team? I do not have one. And what team do I think can beat them? I don't have a favorite NBA team. I just like watching the NBA. I like watching the best players in the world. Whoever's good is good. I like players. I mean, I like all the good players that all y'all like. And whoever wins, wins. Alex asked me, when he does drills in practice, he's consistently one of the best on the team. But when he gets into games, kids do better than him. What could be the reason for this? You probably need to play in more games, Alex. I covered this in the guides and tips page on my website. So you can go to my website and check that. Play more games, get more game experience, increase your confidence in the games. There's a difference between performing in practice and performing in the game. They're two different things. So if you consider yourself good, you gotta perform in the games, not just in practice. Eli S, he said, uh, he passed college, he got much better in basketball, didn't get to the NBA then. Can you get to the NBA after college? What's the maximum age for getting to the NBA? There's no maximum age for the NBA. Whenever you get in, you get in. If you get in, if you don't, you don't. There's no maximum age. I mean, they NBA teams are businesses. They can hire whoever they want to hire. They can choose to not hire you if they choose to not hire you. So there is no maximum age. Can you still get in? Yeah, you can. I mean, but it depends on the person. There is no set of rules to say you can't do this, you can't do that. It's not like you know, working at McDonald's where it's rules, you got to do this, this, and this. Each company can do things as they wish to do them. Satsia says, what time do you go to sleep? What time do you wake up? Uh, that varies. <laughs> Leon, is it better to be a switch hand shooter or does it not matter at all? I don't know many people who switch hands with shooting. Most... Almost every player I know shoots with the same hand every time. And whatever time you spend working on the other hand, if you focused all that on one hand, you'd probably be better with that one hand. I don't think it gives you any advantage to change hands shooting. I've never seen a player doing that. If there is one, let me know. I mean, a player who really used it as an advantage to actually beating players because they were switching hands. I've never seen a player doing that. I know it's possible to shoot with the other hand if you're right-handed. It's people who can shoot with the left. But it's not like they, every other play, they switch hands, they shoot with to baffle the defense. I've never seen that, and it doesn't matter, not in my opinion. 
David Jean <clears throat> asked, what are the most important things to work on for point guards and shooting guards? There's no such thing as the most important thing for a position. No position has a set amount of rules that you must follow or a certain way to play. That does not exist. You play however you want to play. If you watch basketball, you look at point guards. We'll say you look at a Steve Nash, a John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Allen Iverson. He wasn't really a point guard. We say a Jason Kidd, a Rondo, a Derrick Rose, a Kyrie Irving, a Darren Williams. They all have their own individual games. They play how they play, and then they get it gets fit into the team concept based on the personnel around them, based on the coach's system, and based on the other team, other players on the team. So there is no one thing that a point guard has to do. There's no thing that a shooting guard has to do. You, each of you players out there, no matter what position you want to call yourself, you have to figure out what your game is first. You don't do it backwards. You don't say, oh, I want to be a point guard, so I'm going to try to do A, B, and C. No, first you figure out what your game is, and then if you can play, a team will find a way to use you. You don't need to fit a certain mold when you're going into a team. If you got game, the team will find a way to get you on the court. The name of your position, whatever title you want to give yourself, does not matter at all. First of all, you got to figure out what your game is. Then you got to get some game. And once you cover those two steps, everything else will take care of itself. But most players, they get to asking all these questions. They haven't covered step A and step B. So figure out your game, then go get some game, and then you won't have no more questions. Vingash asks, do I think... I am in my prime, and where do I want to go with basketball at this current time? I feel like I'm in my prime. Physically, I feel like, yes, I feel physically I'm pretty much, I can do everything I've ever been able to do. The difference when you get older is this takes a little bit more maintenance. You need to stretch more, you need to foam roll. You got to make sure you're taking care of your body with the foods you're eating. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. You know, make sure you get a good warm up and cool down before and after your workouts. Where would I want to go with basketball? I just want to help push basketball forward, help take the game to the next level, share everything I know about the game that can help the next generation of the game. I feel like I've been doing that with the stuff that I've been putting out on YouTube. Nobody else has put out as much content as I have. I've been doing this longer than anybody else out there. And as far as the people on YouTube, nobody else on YouTube can put up a playing resume outside of YouTube that compares with mine. So that's pretty much where I am in basketball right now. Rob J asked me, would I still try to go to the NBA or am I focused on basketball outside of the country, such as the Euro League? As far as this stuff about the NBA and Euro, I covered this in a video I made in late September when I came back from Slovakia. I posted a 40 minute video where I discussed overseas, I discussed the D League, I discussed the NBA. So, all you asking, all these questions about overseas and the NBA playing pro ball and all that. I covered that in that video. So all of you who asked that question, it's not going to be, I'm not going to keep responding to these. Go and check that video. It's 40 minutes long. Just look up Dre Baldwin overseas. That's in the title of the video. So y'all can see everything I had to say about that. I discussed it in detail, every single level, what's going on, what might happen, what might not happen, why and why not. Um, Blurk. Burkle C asked me, can I tell what a point guard should work on most while training? I just covered that question. There's no such thing as what a point guard should work on. You got to figure out what your game is, who you are as a player, and then you get those skills, and then a team will find a way to use you if you can play. So you're working back. You're thinking backwards right now. You need to flip that around, develop some game first, and then worry about the position. Next question. Well, I suggest someone trying to play ball in the UK. There's not a lot of teams in my area. I need a lot of experience if I'm going to take basketball further in life. Right now, my high school team is not that serious. It's not as serious as it would be in the United States. What Basically, he's asking me what should he do as far as his situation. This is the thing when people ask me, just what should I do stuff? Y'all have to use your brains and think for yourselves. You can't, you can't put the answers to your life, what decisions you should make, what actions you should take in your life in somebody else's hands. I'm not here to tell any of you what to do with your lives. Uh, I share the things that I do with my life and I kind of explain to you why, my thought process, what's going on, what I went through to get to certain positions, but you're not me. You have to think for yourselves. A lot of times I get people telling me their whole situation and such as this question, they're like, oh, what should I do? I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You got a brain. You have to think for yourself what you should do. You know what your options are. 
because people spell out their options. They say, would you do this or would you do that? I'm not you. I'm not putting myself in your shoes. Don't ask me what I would do if I was you because I'm not you. You have to use your brain, decide for yourself because it's your life. The decisions you make will determine what your life is. So you look at the situation, you figure out where you want to be, and then you take the option that gets you closest to that, that gets you in that direction. But it's your job to figure out what you want to do with yourself because the only person who has to live with that decision is you. So if I make the decisions for your life and it turns out negatively or something that you didn't want, then it's not my fault. It's your fault because you decided to follow it. So if you're going to mess up your life, at least be the one that made the decision to mess it up. Don't put it in somebody else's hands. Uh, Dante asked, I think Will Chamberlain's record will be broken as far as scoring 100 points in a game. Uh, I think maybe over the next you know, million years of civilization, maybe somebody might break it. And I think eventually it'll be broken. All records are made to be broken. Everett, <clears throat> excuse me, do I think a shooting guard, a small forward should be an all-around player or just a scorer? Same question I covered already. There's no such thing as what a position should be. The positions don't matter. Develop your own game, figure out who you are. The positions will figure themselves out. Joe Ballin says, people focus on failure and struggle, but how do you deal with success? You just deal with it. You live the same way you deal with failure and struggle. I mean, you had to ask me a little bit more detailed questions. Jeff. King Hall says, what position do you play most? And if I was starting a franchise, what well, started with LeBron, Michael, and Magic? Uh, I play guard, point guard, or shooting guard. doesn't matter. Based on the personnel of the team, I can play either way. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm on the court, I'm going to have an effect on the game. Who would I start a team with between those three? I mean, it depends on their age, of course, but in their prime, I guess I go with Michael Jordan, of course. Heat Nation asked about overseas in the NBA. I covered that already. Kendrick says, I know this is a stupid question. That's that's the first thing he says, so let's see what the rest of the question is. <laughs> but you say work on your fucking game, and I understand that some days I can work on my game. There's stuff I'd rather do. Sometimes I work on my game a lot. Do I think those days I'd rather do something else will make an impact on my game? Kendrick, I don't know. Why would you ask me what the impact will be on your game based on what you do? You're the one who's out there doing it. You're the one out there living your life. I'm not following you. I'm not your coach. I'm not with you every day. I'm not analyzing you. You know what's going to have an impact on your game way more than I would know. So you need to answer that question yourself. Holy Husky says, how can I work on my legs to jump higher? DreAllDay.com slash jump. DreAllDay.com slash jump. That'll take care of your legs. What's my vertical reach? I don't know. That was the next question by Zoik. Brett Davis is 35 years old. I got a full-time job. Play ball for fun. Have I ever thought about developing a weekend warrior program for people like him? All right, Brett, I'll look into that. That's a good suggestion. Let me see what I can come up with. Let me think about that. I see what I come up with. Good question. Mr. Q Ball says, will we ever hear more Dre stories? Yeah, when I think of some, I record them. Whenever I think of a story, I record the story. So if you haven't seen any, because I haven't been thinking about them, but if I ever get around to more, there'll be more. But if you read my website, I write a lot about stories sometimes that I don't make videos of. 2K Channel 13, I'm a 5'9 freshman, I turn 14, how tall would I be? How the hell would I know, man? I ain't no doctor. I have no idea how tall you'll be based on your parents, based on your age, based on your current height. I have no idea, so any questions like that, I'm not addressing anymore. I do not predict heights. Please stop asking me this question. Now, if there's somebody who can predict heights, y'all let me know, and I'll direct everybody to him. I have no idea. Quentin Bethea. He made his basketball team, but he's on the bench. He wants to capitalize on every opportunity, work his way up, prove this coach that he's good. When he's on the court, he gets nervous. How does he, how does he conquer that nervousness on and off the court? Whatever situation makes you nervous, you need to put yourself in that situation over and over again and get over it. It's just that simple. There's no magic words. There's no magic trick. There's nothing anybody's going to do to you. You can't be hypnotized in it. You need to put yourself in that situation that's making you nervous and keep putting yourself in it until it no longer makes you nervous. I covered that on the guides and tips page on my website. So go to my website and check that out and read what I wrote and you'll see more. Marvin says, 
Do I think point guards will take more shots if they're left open, able to create more space off more often? How should a modern point guard play like? Again, same question. There is no such thing as how a point guard should play. You figure out what your game is. You personally, if you have game, the coach will find a place for you on the court, and then you fit into what the coach wants. There is no such thing as how a point guard should play. Mr. Prototype. How do I get rid of butterflies before the game? I've had videos on that. Look up. You can search my name and type in nervousness pregame. I also on the guys and tips page of my website. I also covered that pregame nervousness. You know, getting excited before games, calming down, relaxing before games. I covered that both in writing and in video. Guy Lee says, "I'm a five six point guard. What skills must I have to become a good point guard?" Same question again. No such thing. Benjamin Wu. In my country, people reach in aggressively. The coach doesn't say anything. The coach played basketball in Canada. He doesn't call fouls. How do I get past defenders like that? You know, Benjamin, um, you sound, based on your question, you sound like you're pretty soft. You're thinking pretty soft. I won't say you're soft as a player or a person, but you're thinking soft. If you're getting fouled, foul them back. If the defenders are playing aggressively, then that means you need to start playing aggressively. Nobody's stopping you from playing aggressively. You're complaining about the aggressive play. Basketball is a contact sport. There's nobody stopping you from doing the same thing they're doing. So if they're playing too tough for you, then either you need to toughen up or get off the court. Those are the only two options. Black excellence. He said, I'm 6'1", I'm high school power forward. I'm going to JUCO. They play me the one and the two guard. How do I transition from a big man to being a guard? Work on your fucking game. You want to be a guard, work on the skills that you want to have in your game. It's just that simple. Nothing else that needs to be told. Heat Nation. So have I ever gotten a fight while playing street ball? Of course. Yes. What do you think would be my scoring average in the NBA right now? I have no idea. It depends on the team situation and my role. Danny Balbuena. Who's my favorite basketball team? Nobody. I do not have a favorite basketball team. If I was playing on the team, that'd be my favorite team. But when I'm watching basketball, nobody. I just watch good basketball. Whoever wins, wins. I'm not extremely happy for any one team. I'm not extremely upset if anybody loses. I just watch the good ball. B. Sui says, what's the easiest way to draw a foul inside? I'm a short guard. I want to space the floor and get into the paint. There's no such thing as the easiest way. See, this... A lot of people are looking for the easiest way to do things. There's no such thing as the easiest way to do things. A lot of times you'll see on YouTube or on blog posts, people will title their their content of the easiest way to do this or the fastest way to do that. Really, that's kind of what we call SEO, which basically is to get people to find it quickly because most humans, by nature, we're lazy. Uh, we're looking for the shortcuts. We're looking for the easiest way to do things, the fastest way to do things. The way to do things with the least amount of effort. And in a way, there's a way to do that, but it's not about it being the easiest or the fastest. If you want to get fouled inside, drop to the basket aggressively and don't be afraid of contact. I have a video where I talk about that. That's pretty much all there is to it. There is no one move that's going to get you fouled every time. There's no one shot that's always going to draw a foul. It doesn't work like that. If it was that simple, we all would have been doing it 20, 30, 50 years ago. So it's not that simple. You need to play. You need to develop some game. When you got game, the things that you're asking about doing easily will happen for you. But you got to develop some game first instead of looking for the shortcuts. If it was that simple, y'all know the saying, we would all be doing it. Next question. Muha says, how low should you get when you dribble? There's no such level that you need to get. There's not like you could pull out a measuring stick and say, all right, this is how low I should be. Everything is based on the situation. Some players dribble higher than others. Magic Johnson's really tall. He dribbled kind of high, but he got low when he needed to. Everything is based on the situation. You might dribble high when you at one point on the floor. You get to another point on the floor, you might dribble lower, depending on the player who's defending you, depending on where you're going on the floor, depending on the move you're doing, depending on the personnel that is on the floor with you. It's all based on the situation. And in the game, you will not have time to think about, oh, let me dribble a little bit lower. And in the game, everything that you do in practice is not going to happen exactly the same way. You always need to be able to adjust. And the only way you get to that level is by practicing a lot and playing a lot. Not talking, not watching, not thinking. By practicing and playing. And Muay asks, why can't I attack the basket? I'm not even reading the rest of this question. Muay, if you don't know why you can't do something, how the hell do you think I would know? 
If you can't explain your own actions, I cannot explain your actions. I did that. I did a video on that already. Don't ask me to explain you. If you can't explain you, nobody else can. Snapback asked about 10 questions. I'll just answer the first one. What is the punch card? That was the name Nike made up for me, a nickname they gave me for the Summer Series game. I put a whole playlist about Summer Series on my channel, so you need to go watch that, and that'll answer all your questions. Henry says, well, he asked a question we already covered about overseas, playing in camps, etc. All this is covered in video and also on my website, dreyallday.com. I've covered all these questions. Anything that I'm telling you, I'm reading these questions. If I don't answer them, that means I already covered it. Derek Yee, well, It's Blaze says, how do you get better at dribbling with your weak hand? By practicing. What the hell do you think? I got, a vid I got videos on that on my channel. <laughs> Just look up left hand since I'm right-handed. I'll put it as left hand, but if you're left handed, all you got to do is take the same drills and do them with the other hand. Very simple. Derek Yee says, what number were you drafted for Nike Summer Series? I was the number three pick. Val Presence says, what is my favorite shoe brand? Uh, for the most part, I wear Nike. But I, I'm not closed off to wearing anything else. James Pham, who do I got winning in the NBA Finals this year? It's too early to say. When the finals come around, I'll make a video about it. We'll see. How can I practice making contact layups, get somebody to play against you in practice? Very simple. <laughs> what's, my, what's my favorite food? Uh, a banana, I guess. What was I like in high school? What the hell kind of question is that? You had to ask me a little, you had to be a little bit more detailed. And you can read my book, Buy a Game, which covers my basketball life from when I first started playing up through high school and through college. So that should answer that. And other than basketball, what do I like to do for fun? Uh, read. That's one thing I like to do, read. Joshua says, I played my first, I had my first organized game coming up. To chill for his first game, how did you do? I have videos on that, Joshua. Look it up on my channel and also on my website. Relaxing before games, overcoming nervousness before games. Just search that and add my name to it and you'll see it. Dale David, is there anyone that inspires you? Anyone that I look up to. There's no one that I look up to. No. Am I the only scorer? I'm the only scorer on the floor and I'm on a cold street. What should I do? I don't know, Max. This is Max asking this question. Max, I don't know. If you're on the floor and you're in a cold street, you want to figure something out or you're just going to stand there and, and let the game pass you by. You got to think on your feet when you're playing in basketball. This is not a game where you can pause the game and go read something off YouTube to figure out what to do with yourself. You got to react in the moment. And if you fail enough times in a moment, eventually you're going to get over it or that failure is going to bury you and you'll be out of the game. But you will eventually figure it out. This is not the type of game where somebody's going to tell you what to do and you're going to be able to memorize it and go do it in a game. The game moves too fast. You have to learn to think on your feet, which means you're going to go through some failures to get there. So you will figure it out. I can't tell you what you should do. You need to figure it out. Go keep playing and learn. Rashaba says, how can I get stronger without weight since I'm only 13? Check out the Ultimate Athlete Program at hoophandbook.com. It covers that. No weights required. This is my favorite basketball position to play. I already covered that, so Tough Tanny says, do I think an ugly shooting form is accepted with a good percentage of shots going in? Well, first of all, who determines what's ugly? And who determines what's a good percentage? Those are both relative, those are both relative terms. So I really can't answer that. Adam McCann, McMahon says, should I square up my feet when I shoot? I don't know, Adam. You had to determine that. Is your shot, you're the one shooting the ball. If, is it going in? Then you should keep doing what you're doing. If it's not, then you might need to make some adjustments. King Cobra says, do I get nervous before a game? Uh, not really. Not anymore. What was my best basketball highlight? Mm, I had to think about that. Maybe my first camp. The first pro camp that I went to, I got a video on that. If you go to my channel, the first video I ever posted on YouTube with the thousands that I have was from my first ever professional camp. Nice Kick says, who are my favorite artists? I don't know what kind of artists he's talking about. Eddie Olmos, are you still trying for the NBA? I've covered this in a video. I said that already. Go check that video. Search Dre Baldwin overseas. You'll see the video. It's 40 minutes long. Reagan Juan said, didn't play basketball, what sport would I play instead? Maybe football or maybe something like tennis, an individual sport. I think I could have been good in tennis if I had played tennis. 
Trey Parker, who's the best power forward ever in your position? He said, his opinion is Tim Duncan. I say, yeah, Tim Duncan. I agree. Dennis305 says, what keeps you motivated? I put a video out on that on Christmas Day. It's called, What's Your Motivation? So look that up. Jerry and Simon says, how can I tell my coach that I deserve a spot over another player after I already give 110% in practice? Say it to him just the way you're saying it to me. So don't say anything on the internet that you won't say to the face of the person you're talking about. So if you can say it to me, you can say it to your coach. Infamous 029, how do you deal with ball hoggers? Step your performance up and don't worry about controlling theirs. Mr. T Money, what can I do to build up my strength and what food can I eat to help me grow? See the diet and nutrition page on my website. Also the diet and nutrition playlist on YouTube where I talk about foods, I talk about different diets, different lifestyles of eating. It's not really diets. And as far as strength, check out the Position of Power program on hoophandbook.com. It's a 10-week strength training program written by a certified strength and conditioning coach. Stat player. What can you do to get exposure after high school if you got no recognition or college scholarships? Number one, you can step your game up. So if you have game, you'll get exposed. If you're not getting exposure, it's because you're not that good. So a lot of people come and ask about exposure when they ain't got no game. If you have game, the exposure will find you. Do you think LeBron James was worried about finding exposure? He didn't have to because he could play. So if you're not being exposed, it's probably because your performance is not good enough. So step your performance up and exposure will find you. If you want to play in college and you're out of high school, you probably should walk on to a team. I covered that in a guide on my website. Go to the guides and tips page, and I wrote about walking on to an NCAA team. If you have game, you'll make that team. If you don't make the team, then you need to improve your game. Not your exposure, your game. Would I rather be in the paint or at the three-point line? I don't know what the hell kind of question that is. Wherever is necessary that's most conducive to winning, which is probably a combination of both. That guy, Frizz, am I going to do a meetup because he lives in Miami? Maybe. One day. I put out some videos for checking players out and stuff like that. And I got a few people, but a lot of people who watch these videos ain't in the same place. So we'll see. Eventually, as more people come around, we'll see what comes. Ron White. What is my goal as a basketball player? To get as good as I can be, have fun with the game, and when I'm no longer having fun with it, then I'll stop playing, but I'll still be involved in it. When I'm not feeling like I want to play anymore, I don't feel like I can physically do it no more, I'll be done. And whenever that happens, it happens. Ray F asks, is P90X effective for basketball? That's really too broad of a question. It depends on the person, depends on their prior position before, how they were physically before they started doing P90X and what your goals are with the program. You don't just do a program that says effective for basketball. I could do 100 push-ups, and it might help my game. 100 push-ups might hurt your game. So it depends on the person. Everything is based on nuance. So you had to be a lot more detailed with that question than to just say, is it effective for basketball? It's like asking, is a car effective? What are you doing with the car? What's the purpose of having the car? Where are you going? You know? Paris asks, how can you get better or quicker with the spin move? Paris, what do you think? Practice. Gabrielle says, have I ever played against any pro players or pros before they became pro? Yes, I've covered that on my website, dreallday.com. See the FAQ, F-A-Q, for frequently asked questions. Ethan, so I worked really hard on my game this offseason. I've improved tremendously. But in the games, he's been passive and lacking confidence. What can he do to help with this problem? See the guides and tips page on my website. I have covered this in detail in writing. Dal Marion, what workout should I do with a small for as a small forward? I covered that already. No such thing. You got to do your workouts as you. Develop some game, and you won't have to worry about the title of your position. Get some game first, then worry about everything else later. Or develop some game. Develop your game. You might have game already, but you need to figure out what your game is. Instead of trying to be a small forward, be you, and the positions won't even matter at that point. Richard, the truth. Richard the third. What is your mindset when entering a game? Is I don't have any certain mindset that I put into words entering a game. I just get focused and ready to play. Whatever works for me at that moment, that day. I want to play good offensively. What should I be thinking before the game? I kill an open gym, but in the game is different. Why? 
First of all, I can, as I said in the earlier question, I can't explain why you're not performing in the game. If you can't explain you, nobody else can explain you. You got to be able to explain your own actions better than anyone else can explain your actions. I cannot explain why you're doing the things that you're doing. As far as what should you be thinking to enter in a game, you got to figure that out. It's your brain. Every human being is wired differently. So I could give you a thought, and that thought might put you in a certain mind frame, but that exact same thought, you take somebody else, and it's going to put them in a completely different mind frame. So you had to figure out what works best for you. This is the mental game. The mental game and the physical game are both your responsibilities as a player. So just as much as you work on your body, you need to work on your mind. It is your job to know what thought process puts you in the best state of mind to have you perform the way that you want to perform. Now, I've written two books on this, The Mental Handbook, and the mirror of motivation. Both of those are available on Amazon. You can check those out if you're looking for more mental game tips and also the playlist, mental game and motivation tips on YouTube. So I have covered this already in detail, but it's your job to figure out how you need to think. Nobody else can tell you how to think. You got to figure that out for yourself. Matthew Milam, what got you so motivated to get this far? I've covered that already. Eric. When I feel like I was in my prime, the question's been answered already. John says, when are you going to play ball with the boys from Kick Genius? We did already. Nike Summer Series last year. Elias, you seen the tats. He says, what does it personally mean? Yeah, yeah. You got to ask me a better question than that. Ricky says, how old am I? I'm 31. On February 3rd, I'll be 32. Mario. What advice would I give to young ballers? Uh, work on your fucking game. How do you manage school and basketball? Cover that in video. Advice for young ballers. When people come to me and they say, well, I'm a young baller. Can you give me some advice? If you want advice, you got to ask a specific question. Just saying, hey, I'm a basketball player and I'm 15. I want to be the greatest in the world. Can you give me some advice? My answer to that is work on your fucking game. If you want a specific answer from me, you got to ask me a specific question. A general broad question like that, I don't really have anything to tell you. If you want some details, you gotta ask in details. All right, next question. Xavier Factor says, what drill can I do to practice without using the basketball? Well, if you wanna play basketball, you need to practice with a basketball. Ultra AA, I don't know how to say this name. When it comes to, ba what comes first? Basketball, school, or social life? Depends on the person. You ask that person what comes first to them. We all got our own priorities. I'm not going to tell anybody what their priorities should be. Everyone decides for themselves. Jimmy says, Jimmy Abner, who's the first person you'll call when you get into the NBA? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe my parents. Dre, I want to be a better driver. What program should I get, Kobe or Rose? Uh, depends on your size and what type of skills you want to work on. I say get both. Uh, I say... Depending on your size, I think it would depend on your size. Whichever player is closest to your size, I say go with that guy. Zadians, Zaydan says top five point guard. I covered that in the video already. Sixteen twenty three basketball says, how do I know what to work on and how? Because you need to analyze yourself, think about what your game is, what you want to get better at, and decide. That's how you know. And if you haven't done that work, then you need to start doing it. Thinking is work. And it's your job to think for yourself. Scaroni39. What are your favorite socks to wear? I don't have any favorite socks to wear. Daron Johnson says, 5'11", too short to play the two. It depends on that person. You got to ask them if they're too short. If they think they're too short, then I agree. If they think they're not, then I agree. Jackpot Prince. What should a power forward be working on to better their game? Covered that already. No such thing. Vision says, what is your vertical? I don't know. I haven't had my vertical measured in probably two and a half years. And when it was, it was measured at 39 inches in the summer of 2011. Lensational says, play varsity. I feel like I'm doing everything my coach asked me, but I barely see the court. How can I get him to trust me to help the team? Go ask him. What's stopping you? You know how to talk. Go talk to him. Jamie says you should go and play versus Kick Genius. I would pay money to see that. All right, me versus both of them. Y'all set it up. Landon Hagar says I have a lot of pressure to do good in basketball. My family, how do I deal with that pressure? 
Well, Landon, you put your name, so he said, I have a lot of pressure to do good in basketball. How do I deal with that pressure? Uh, you had to ask me a little bit more specific question. If you don't want to play basketball, don't play basketball. I mean, open your mouth and talk to people. If you don't want to play, don't play. If you want to play, play. But I think as far as you saying, how do you deal with that pressure? I will be, need a little bit more detail in your question than just say, how do you deal with pressure? DDAC19 says, will my YouTube account be verified? The thing with the YouTube verifications is matching a name with the title or some shit that YouTube and Google Plus is doing. I don't even know it exactly. It doesn't even matter. I mean, it doesn't have any effect on people watching the video, so I don't care. Keith says, how can I prevent air balls from happening? Don't shoot an air ball. Matt Sackhoff, who's my favorite NBA player of all time, Michael Jordan. Brian Aaron, what music am I listening to that is on this reply? I'm not listening to any music because then it would be in the video and then you wouldn't hear me talking, so I'm not listening to music at all. ASAP Lamar says, do I want kids? Eventually, yes. When? I don't know. Isaac B. I'm in year 10. So ninth or 10th grade, I think. And I'm not sure if I should try out for first five, which is the seniors. My parents think I should, and the coach said I'm one of the best in the league, but I'm five seven. Do I think he should wait another year? I have no idea. You're the one that hasn't lived with that decision, so think about it long and hard, and when you come to a decision, live with it and don't look back. But it's your life. You need to decide for yourself what you should do. Manuel says, what's the most memorable move or play I've done in the game? Probably at my first camp when I got a, a nice tip dunk over a bunch of people at my first pro camp. That's in my first ever YouTube video. It's still on YouTube to this day, so go look it up. Sandro says, am I going to go on V1F, Verse 1 Federation? I'm not going to join the league because they're based in Texas for the most part. And as far as playing those guys one-on-one -on -one every day is not really what I'm looking to do, but we are looking to play maybe one or two games. We'll see if it happens. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. D says, paid. how long do you have to practice and train to be really good? Is there a time frame? There is no time frame. You practice as long as you need to to get the game that you want. There is no time frame. If there was, then we would all just have a clock and know exactly how long to practice. And then it'd be probably be a lot more people playing because they wouldn't quit because they would know exactly what they need to do. But who knows? I can't speak for anyone else. George says, now my two motion shooter or one motion shooter, and which is better? I have no idea what the hell that means, and I don't care. I just shoot the ball. If it goes in, I keep doing that. If I miss, I make adjustments. What's the average small forward hype when you go to D-League tryouts? When you're at a tryout, there's no group. It's not like, all right, all the point guards here, shooting guards here. It's not like that. It's just a bunch of players, and we play, and you show your game, period. It's not like we sitting in groups like, oh, the point guards is over here and the centers is over there. You just play. Do I think Kobe will pass Kareem on an all-time scoring list? Uh, that's a tough question. I don't know. We got to see how he comes back from injury. Gaming Skill says, when was my first dunk? I think I was 16 when I first dunked. I don't remember exactly where I was, but probably at Finley Playground in Mount Airy where I grew up. Carolis, is it? Does it become easier to sprain your ankle after they get sprained a few times? Yes, I think it is easier to re-sprain after it's happened already. Do they get, like, weaker? Uh, I can't exactly talk for your ankles, but it's hard to tell. I'm not really a doctor. It's not my specialty. So there's not much more I can tell you about that. You probably want to speak to a doctor, not a YouTube commentator about that. Or a YouTube video maker, unless they're a doctor. Shoes all day. Says, how do you get recognition for your game? By having game. If you got game, people will recognize it. If you're not being recognized, because you ain't good. Matthew Castro. I'm not really tall. I'm 5'2", but I'm aggressive. I got a decent mid-range game. I can pass. What do I think a kid of my size should work on more? Uh, be able to pass, be able to handle the ball, be able to make outside shots. At that size, those, those are the skills that will help you get on the court. I uh, can't say this name. He says, how can I gain weight as a basketball player? If you want to gain weight as far as strength, you need to eat more than you're eating, and you need to lift weights. Simple. Kalan says, what part of your game do you feel like you had to improve the most as you've gotten older? Work on ball handling and shooting, because you're not going to be able to out-athletic everybody as you get older. You no know, athleticism starts to decline once you go over the age of 30 for almost all athletes. So you got to get better with your mental game, like thinking the game better. 
And as far as basketball goes, what we call athleticism insurance, I heard somebody say that, which basically means skills that don't are not based on being more athletic. This means hitting outside shots, handling the ball, being a short ball handler, not turning it over, footwork, more skill stuff rather than athletic stuff. Kevin Solomon says, where could I practice during the winter if I don't have a gym or a YMCA nearby? I don't know, Kevin. I don't know where you live. So if you're a basketball player, you're going to find a way to play basketball. If you're not, you'll find an excuse. But I think you'll be able to figure that out. You don't need me to tell you where to go. You know how to use the internet. You hear on YouTube. You'll find a court if you want to find a court. Adrian says, oh, this question don't make sense. Frosty Breath says, can you tell me how to turn on the aggressive mentality? I have videos on that. If you go look in the mental game slash motivation playlist, I've talked about uh, putting yourself in an aggressive mindset. But for the most part, you have to find what works for you. There is no one guaranteed way that works for aggression. We're all wired. Our brains are all wired differently. So what works for me probably won't work for you and won't work for the next guy. So you got to figure out what works for you. It's your job to figure that out. There's nobody else's job to tell you. You got to work on your mental game the same way you work on your physical game. And so if you haven't done the work, it's your fault. It's nobody else's responsibility. Hyan Khan says, I didn't make the basketball team, even though I think I did pretty good. Do I have any tips for next year? Get better. Narkees Harris, how can I become a more explosive finisher? By practicing. Terry Cruz, based on dribbling, is your non-dominant hand as good as your dominant hand? Yes. James Vincent, what do your tattoos say? This tattoo over here says... Superstars, you can see. This says energy, persistence, preparation, and boldness, and this means ambition. It was all the tattoos I have. Shane Larkin. This person's name is Shane Larkin. Is it a kickball if the other team's player throws the ball to your knee? I don't know. You had to ask a referee. I ain't no ref. Mustafa says that a company just said that a ball calculates the spin on the shot, your arch, and all. I think I heard a little bit about that. Do I think it's good for improving your game or is it unnecessary? I don't really care. I don't really care about all that shit. Um, if you want to use it, use it. If you don't, don't. I'm not going to tell you to buy it. I'm not going to tell you not to buy it unless they pay me to endorse it, which they haven't. I only know who they are, so I don't care. All right, so all questions have been covered. Thank you, everybody, for sending your questions in. If you got more questions that I have not covered, you can leave them in the comments to this video. Again, do not come in here responding to the comments. I'll get rid of you off this channel. As long as I'm getting good questions, I'll keep this going. The questions get whacked, and it's over. That's it. That's all. Work on your game. Dre all day. This is Coach Christian Grudeli from Europe. Work on your game.